New data has revealed Australians are living longer than ever before. Some make it to very old ages, but reaching 110 is still a pretty rare event. Joining us live now is Dr Lindsay Wu from the UNSW Laboratory for Ageing Research. Really appreciate you making the time. Thank you. Firstly, what does the data tell us about our, our likelihood of making it past, say, 100? Yeah, look, it happens, but it's rare. It's becoming more common that people live beyond the age of 100. What I guess the report was getting at is there doesn't seem to be an increase in the maximum age, as in we have a very small number of people who seem to live beyond 110, but that age doesn't seem to really be increasing, much like our, uh, unlike our uh, median lifespans. So, you know, on average, uh, Australians are living longer than ever before. I think we're the fourth or fifth most uh, long-lived country in the world, which is an amazing achievement. Um, and I think on average, the life expectancy for Australians seems to be increasing around three months every year, which is, again, astounding. But that maximum lifespan isn't increasing. And, and Dr. Wu, why, why is that? Do we mainly put it down to, to the healthcare system? Is that what we should be uh, respecting at this point? Yeah, look, I mean, we're one of the richest countries in the world. We have an astounding healthcare system. And so it's fantastic that our average lifespan increases, uh, has been increasing consistently. That's not the case around the world. For example, the United States, life expectancy has been decreasing for a couple of years in a row now. When it comes to the maximum lifespan, there's a sort of a contentious topic. The question is whether there is a maximum limit to human lifespan. We just don't know the answer to that yet. It's a very controversial question. And I guess there's also the debate around the quality of life after a certain age as well. Exactly. I mean, anecdotally, the people I speak to are all more concerned about their quality of life when they're older. I know I am. And that's what our field is more interested in. So I work in the biology of ageing and we're looking to develop new therapies or strategies to improve healthy ageing and overall lifespan. And, you know, in the, in the short term, what we can hope to achieve is therapies that change, you know, real measurable aspects of the quality of life. For example, mobility, muscle mass, memory, and other aspects that re are really important to the quality of life. Measuring uh, whether these new interventions extend overall human lifespan is going to be very, very difficult. So, Dr. Roy, through your studies, what have you found in terms of top tips for people who do want to to age well, are there certain things that you're doing in your own life that, that you're hoping are gonna, is going to set you up for future success? Yeah, look, I mean, while our lab works on, uh, you know, drug interventions to try and extend lifespan and improve health, you know, there's some pretty old-fashioned advice that uh, is pretty solid. So, you know, maintain a lot of exercise, watch what you eat. Um, you know, the, really the big one for older people is maintaining muscle mass. We have this idea that older people are frail and they shouldn't exert themselves too much, but absolutely, old people should get in the gym and lift weights. Resistance training in the elderly seems to be very important for maintaining their muscle mass and preventing them from falling over and eventually breaking the hip and dying. So there's things that we can do in the meantime. You know, my own uh, personal advice or my personal um, uh, tips or how I aim to, oh, sorry, in practice how I may live longer is to achieve, you know, cardio exercise through constantly being late to meetings and having to run to get to them on time and not having enough time to eat enough food. But uh, look, that's just my experience. <laughs> and what about the, the difference between men and women? Is there a big disparity between life expectancy when it comes to men and women? And, and do we know why it is that generally men do pass earlier? Yeah, it's a great question. You know, across almost every species on, the, on planet Earth, the females always live longer. We don't quite know why it is. Uh, you know, it's a bit of a controversial topic, but it's always a small increase in overall life expectancy for women. Now, aside from the fact that women do live slightly longer, there are differences in how we can maintain health into old age. And for women in particular, the big risk is a loss of bone density and a loss of muscle mass. So that's, again, why granny should get into the gym and start pumping iron to improve that uh, bone strength and that muscle mass going into old age. And how do you expect that life expectancy will change over the decades? For example, a, a child born today? Yeah, it's a great question. Uh, you know, with this continual increase in average life expectancy that we're seeing, the question is whether we'll hit a limit, right? And so that's a really controversial question. Is there a maximum human lifespan? And, you know, there are lots of people who say that there is a maximum lifespan. I'm not a demographer, so I can't really say. But I guess the, where the controversy comes from is that we have all these drugs in the lab which seem to make animals live longer. Now, 
a mouse is not a human, so we can't really say for certain that that's going to work. But look, that's where we hope to move into the future. We hope to develop other therapies and other interventions, for example, even dietary interventions that could extend lifespan beyond where it is today. It's a fascinating field of study. Dr. Lindsay, we really appreciate you joining us with your insights. Thanks so much. No worries. Thank you.